Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the garage. Usually I am showing you guys a video where I'm fabricating something on the suspension or something on the chassis and uh, usually there's multiple steps involved and I'm kind of quickly giving you a 10-15 minute wrap up of what the project was. What I want to do today is give you a full project from start to finish of just making one little bracket. So in this video, I've got one bracket that I need to make on the lower control arm of the bug suspension. It doesn't exist yet, it's only in my brain. All I'm going to do is this bracket, I'm going to bring you guys along, I'm going to show you every single step so that you can see what's involved in making basically any part. I need to make a bracket that will uh, support the backside of the shock and I also want it to, I want it to come in this way and I want it to kick out so that it can put some pressure on these welds here and it can put some pressure on these welds here because this this portion of the control arm is actually just hollow so I don't want all of the force going just to this metal here so I want it to it's not just gonna be a flat bracket it's gonna have some sort of a some sort of a kick to it on both sides and just like this bracket it's it's gonna have some tapers so right now the brackets only up here I haven't done anything with it yet um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a piece of metal. So here I've got a piece of metal. I just picked it up at the hardware store. It is 3 16 I wanted it to be 3 16 inch thick by two inches by three feet long. Yep, I'm gonna start by going down into the basement and cutting seven inches off of this. Every time I make a cut or anything, I file off the edges. I just can't, personally myself, I can't stand working with razor sharp edges. Also, if there's any burrs on there, it'll mess with putting a, a straight edge on it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this seven inch piece that I just cut out and I'm going to estimate roughly where I think the hole will go. So I'm going to take my Sharpie. I'm going to mark the hole. And I'm going to trace it. So I can cut it out very similar to the bracket that's already in place. Now I'm going to take this into the basement. I'm going to mark out this hole, punch it, drill it to half inch. And then with my bandsaw, I'm going to roughly cut this shape out. Then I'll come out here with the grinder, the flapper wheel grinder, and smooth this all, make it look a little bit nicer. What I'm going to do for this hole is I've got, I've got it laid out here with the Sharpie. I'm just going to estimate finding center on it. I think that looks pretty good. That'll work. It's not it's not 100% perfect, but that is plenty good. Make sure I put on my safety glasses. I'm going to take the punch here. I'm going to punch a quarter inch hole in here. Now you can see how that center was a little bit off. Now I've got a half inch hole in there, but that's not good enough because we want to be, we want to be good fabricators, a little bit better than the norm. So we're going to take this one step farther. We're going to put in a, I don't even know what the hell you call that, a deburring. It's actually meant for a little die grinder, but I put it in my drill. You can do the same thing with just a larger drill bit. I just want to chamfer the edges. Right now this hole is just kind of all sharp and tore up from the drill bit. You put that on there, it gives you a nice chamfer on the hole, makes the hole real nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna cut this in my bandsaw. 
I'm gonna follow the contour. I'm going to stay a little bit outside of the line, especially here, because once I've cut this, I'm gonna go outside with my grinder and I'm gonna clean it all up. Okay, so that's my rough shape. I'll clean this up. I'll clean this up. I'll clean it all up with the flapper wheel on the grinder, make it all smooth. Okay, so I've got the I've got the flapper wheel on my grinder. And I'm gonna take these edges on this thing and clean them up. That'll work. Let's go bolt it in place and see what kind of bends we can put on it. Okay, so here's our bracket. This is a spacer that I have made that is just as wide as the shock absorber mount with the spacers that go in it. I've used this before when fabricating brackets. So rather than mess around with putting the actual shock absorber in here, I'm just gonna put this in. and then bolt it to our bracket and that'll roughly show us where this bracket is is going to go we could leave this straight but I don't want to do that I want to kick this end and this end over to number one like I said earlier tie it in with the side profiles of this control arm for strength and it'll also give the the bracket a stronger tendency to hold itself upright because it'll have more than just two dimensions. So I'm not gonna get crazy technical on this. I'm just going to, I'm gonna mark here. Okay, now we're gonna just take this down into the basement. I'm gonna put it in my vise, and I'm just gonna give both of those a kick down. All right, here we are back at the control arm. Put this in here again with the spacer. Okay, I think that's good where it's at. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark where we need to cut it one more time. I'll bring that up a little bit like that. And this one we can just cut straight up. Now we'll go duck back down to the bandsaw, knock that off, knock that off, smooth everything out again with the grinder. That should be about it. All right, now we're going to clean it up, radius the corners. That looks pretty good. Now let's go see how it fits. Now we've got our bracket. This should possibly be finished. Let's actually bolt it with the shock absorber so we can see how it actually fits. I'm calling that a success. It comes up even with this piece. So it holds the shock absorber nice and nice and straight. It's got a kick on both ends, which is gonna help hold this bracket upright from leaning over. And it comes over and ties in, not just on the flat plate here where there's not a lot of support, it ties in with the ends where it'll get welded into the side plates. I just wanted you guys to go along on a ride where I made a part from just a thought to all the way to the finished product because most, if not all of the videos that I do, a lot of these pieces I just take for granted because if I'm trying to put it into a, a 10 or 15 minute video, I have to knock out so many pieces like that that you don't even get to see. So thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you on the next one.